I know you're going to dig this. Ladies and gentlemen, 2016 Front Chronicles on the One TV with G. You have no idea what you are in store for right now. Would you please tell us who you are and what you are in the music industry? Uh, my name is Steve Arrington, and I'm a singer, drummer, songwriter, uh, formerly a uh, vocalist and drummer with Slave, and then doing my own thing with Steve Arrington's Hall of Fame and collabs with uh, people like Santana and things like that, trying to keep it funky and trying to keep it live. Now, give me a little history, as if I didn't know. On the Dayton Funk Sound, the groups that came from here and, you know, that kind of thing, and that you were here in its infancy. Yes, it, it started with the Ohio Players and... Uh, the mighty Ohio players, yeah. Um, you know, they were doing things like Pain, Funky Worm, Ecstasy. Uh, inspired all of us when Ohio players hit. Uh, you have other groups like Lakeside, Heat Wave. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I was a part of Slave, Fazo, Dayton, Sun. I mean, it just goes on and on. Funk capital of the world. So much funk came out of this town, and a small town it is too. It's not like a movement like Detroit, where it was a songwriter-driven thing that they did at Motown. They had great songwriters that were on staff. Or even Minneapolis, where so much of Prince's influence trickled down to a lot of the other acts. Dayton is different in a sense that you had all these different acts and none of the groups sounded the same. Totally different. Um, people need to really peep what Dayton has really put down. Um, and people are starting to get wind of it now. And I'm excited to, to be a part of it. And uh, the Ohio Players was the beginning of it. And, you know, they was killing it. And we all were inspired by their originality to be unique in our own way, the way they were unique in their way, but not to sound like them. Yeah, and we, you know, we attributed that too in that, you know, back when we were in school, we had the advantage of taking music in school. Absolutely. And our children today don't have that advantage unless you go to a school that's specifically geared towards the arts. Right. Absolutely. So the individuality, like you were saying, I mean, you know, we were all in different schools and we were all able to express ourselves musically differently. Therefore, you get your different sounds because, like you said, not one group sounded the same. Mm -mm. Everybody was different. And, you know, you had Zap who was killing it, too. Uh, what was so interesting about it, we were all on the charts at the same time. We, were, we would do shows and see each other out on the road. We'd be on the road together, and we would all be in the top ten all at the same time. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a rivalry thing where we didn't want the other guys to get off. Everybody was getting off to rep Dayton, you know, the Dayton funk. Uh, it was awesome times and still is. Still it still is. is. It's, it's great. I mean, I did a show in Denver in uh, December of, I think, December of 2014. And um, met David Webb there, actually, for the first time. And I had uh, been retired for 25 years. I'd come back on the scene, did a few shows. Uh, then I went to Denver, and that's the first time I'd ever been on the same bill with the Ohio Players, and the first time I had been on a bill with Zapp in many years, so it was like a Dayton reunion. Oh, it was crazy. It was nothing but love, and everybody did their thing and was kicking. 
Um, I love being a musician. Let me just tell you that I'm so glad God made me a musician. It's a tough life, but it's worth it. We are very blessed that you are a musician. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So tell me this. Why hasn't this been celebrated years ago? Meaning that, you know, that funk sound, the genre itself. And why is it taking so long? Or are we just passive here in the city of Dayton as it relates to our funk history? Mm, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, it seems like we got caught in the middle of R&B and hip hop. It's so many, uh, uh, so much research and journalists have chronicled the soul movement, Stax, Motown, Atlantic Records, uh, and then there's, you know, all the uh, attention that's been paid to hip hop from its inception so much has been written about it and funk kind of got caught in the middle of that i think you know you have those who have spoke about like the great sly stone sly and the family stone has been talked about and people know and and, and then there's uh, uh p funk you know george clinton but i'm gonna talk about the higher players again to me between Slash Stone and Earth, Wind & Fire and Prince, the Ohio players was that thing. Um, so I think people need to understand how crazy hot the Ohio players were and still are and Dayton in general. Funk music is catching on again on the underground scene. New acts are coming up and uh, the, the older veteran acts are getting fresh fired, myself included. Um, funk lives and in all the other genres since funk it's funk all in it you know it's even pop music today they trying to get it funky um, so you know I'm just excited that uh, even though our music isn't spoken of in terms of the journalistic point of view as some of the other genres we up in the building we up in here yeah you just alluded to something and we'll, we'll keep it on script then we're going to go off script because you, you did three, three things at once in that little statement that you just made. Okay. So, first statement. The sound was defining at the time. And it's still used today via sampling. But like the Wright brothers, some folk don't know that funk music came from Dayton, Ohio. What's your take on that? Dayton is a small town. For the talent that's come out of here, it's extremely small. People can't believe it. So they just think these groups come from Chicago. They come from L.A. They come from New York. They just assume this. No, they came out of Dayton. Um, I think one of the reasons that Dayton has been slowed, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, for instance, they're just now getting around to making sure people understand that he came from Dayton. You mentioned the Wright brothers. They're just now getting around and making sure people understand one of the greatest uh, achievements of man came out of this city. Uh, you know, they they pretty much brought flight to, to, to the world. And we brought funk, the second move of funk. Uh, James Brown was the first wave. Sly came behind that, even put Hendrix in there with Band of Gypsies. But that second boom wave started with the Ohio players. Dayton. Yep. Well, there's, there's another two or three in there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to the script because I told you before we started, there's going to be a part two to this. Okay. Where we're going to have a real free form thing going okay. on. Okay. Because, again, there's three other things in there that, you know, we want to make people aware of that also happened in conjunction with funk in terms of not only how it got started, but, you know, like you were saying, at one point, uh, seven of the top ten songs were groups that came out of Dayton, Ohio. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, there were 13 groups that were signed to major record deals at one time from Dayton, Ohio. And Dayton has been a city of innovators from the Wright Brothers to the Bicycle to Brakes to Air Conditioning to Freon, you name it. Now, after all is said and done, we're going to go back on script. Okay. We'll be back in just a little second here. Okay. But I got to get I got to stick to the script just right now. After all is said and done. And people come from miles around cuz you know we're building the funk center. 
Mm -hmm. We're going to build the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center, a.k.a. the Funk Center, here in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. So when people come to that facility, what would you like to see them walk away with personally? Oh, man. I would like to see them walk away with an energy and an atmosphere filled with the power of the music and the energy that the city had when all of this was coming. You'll, you'll see the greatness of Roger Troutman and the mightiness of the great Sugarfoot. Um, and then, you know, I'd like to talk about Platypus too. Platypus was a group uh, who came out of Dayton, was very unique and original. There was a guitarist, man, he died young. The great Larry Hines, man. I want people to be able to know who he was. Excellent cat, man. Yes, uh, Dayton is yes, crazy sir. with it. So innovative and unique. I want people to feel the energy of innovation. I want them to leave with that. That's that's going on here. Yeah, on the one. I mean, not only was the music on the one, but everyone here in the city was on the one. Absolutely. And that what we, you know, us regular folk out in the street, we see folks like yourself or Sugar or the Wilder Brothers. We see you on the street. It was like we were brothers. We didn't, you know, see you as superstars. That's right. But That's then right. when you guys went out of the city, you had to walk around with bodyguards. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, I had people, you know, saying they were me. And we. And this one guy, man, was like, he must have looked a lot like me because he was booking shows and we were trying to track this brother down. And finally he went into the military and he skipped out. But yeah, man, you know, imagine Sugarfoot with the swoop and the double neck guitar. I mean, the image, uh, the mighty, uh, oh man, uh, diamond on drums playing a drum solo in the beginning of a, of a ballad. I mean, want to be free? Nobody heard that before or after. A drum solo before a ballad. And then it worked. When it came in, you just said, that was insane. That's Dayton. That's Dayton. Yeah. So, real quick, then why does the Hall of Fame, the funk music Hall of Fame belong here in Dayton, Ohio? Totally. Totally what? a shit. Tell me why. Because, Tell me. because Dayton is the funkiest place on earth. Chicago has that electric blues that Muddy and Wolf and them started. Uh, you know, New York has Broadway. You know, L.A. has Tinseltown. Dayton got that funk. And if you want that real funk, you gotta come mess with us, cause this is where it gets really heavy at. We stomp in Dayton. That's the thing I like to say. We stomp. The music stomps in Dayton, uh, and, and it still does. You go to the shows, and it's cracking. Um, I'm excited about it all over again. The older I get, the more I just get excited about it again, because I listen to the music, the new music included. It just hits hard. It's original. And some of the greats have passed away, like, you know, the great Sugarfoot and, and uh, Satch and Pee Wee, the great Mark Adams from Slave and, and uh, uh, the great Mark Hicks from Slave and others, and, you know, have passed away, but their music still lives. And as long as I'm living, I'm going to be repping the homies until God take me home. Uh, Big ups to Dayton yeah. Funk. Well, you see, that's what we're that's what we're doing. We're gonna yeah. do our little part. Yes, sir. You know, on yes, this sir. side of the world to Funk to make sure absolutely that it's not only recognized but it's legitimized. Come on, spit that. No question. Right. No question. So watch this. Uh, let's talk about the Funk Center, just a little bit. Okay. In terms of you know, without anything, you know, we're we're a museum, and we're building a museum. So now word of mouth is really like, it's becoming like wildfire. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, do you use social media? Absolutely, absolutely. So it sounds like you've got a built-in plan to help the Funk Center uh, push its agenda slash funk recogni recognition on the world. Absolutely. First of all, I want to say big ups and much love and respect for David Webb, who's uh, spearheading this movement. Uh, for the Funk Center uh, Hall of Fame in Dayton. Big ups to him, nothing but love and respect. Uh, you know, you know my social media from Twitter to Instagram, you know, uh, Facebook and so on, I'm gonna be uh, repping uh, the Funk Center and Brother David 
and wherever I go, you know, I'm getting ready to head out to the Caribbean to do the a Tom Joyner cruise in April, um, in mid-April, and then heading over to Scotland uh, the following month, and I'm going to be repping hard. Uh, and so w what's going on here is so exciting. It's like, uh, it it's like, it's like when we first hit, this whole energy is like that again. Like you said, people are getting amped all over the country. Cats are coming in, giving uh, uh, awesome uh, uh, gear and and product from the past, uh, from the funk acts. They're all bringing things in. I'll be bringing things in myself. Um, this is an awesome thing, and it's supposed to be here. Like I said, man, Tinseltown's in Hollywood. Broadway's in New York. The funk is in Dayton. Right. Here. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know, and there's there will be dedicated rooms to all the acts that came out of Dayton. I mean, ah. all the acts, not just the little acts, not just the big acts, not the medium acts, but we're going to have a room dedicated to each individual act that came from Dayton. Oh, that's and so you know, there's that's already a room that's for Steve Arrington's All Star Band. I appreciate it, man. I want to say a shout out to cats like, uh, like Robert Ward, cats yes. like that. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. Junie Morrison. Yeah, Junie. Oh, we, we can go yeah, on, man. Yeah, we yeah, can keep man. it popping with real, real bringers of the funk. Yeah, Greg Webster, you know. Because, you, know, you know, we travel. So, you know, I haven't been to Scotland yet. So don't be surprised when you go out there doing your thing in uh, Scotland that we don't show up. Come on, Because we're liable to do that. Let's get it popping. It's just a plain. <laughs> we got passports. I saw David in Denver. He was see? up in the building, and, no and, doubt. And, we, and we'll just have on what we got on. Get on the plane, come see you, get back on the plane, come home. Come on, man. But after we do a little party, you know, whatever they do to party up there, we're going to bring the funk with us to help you do the funk in That's what Edinburgh. I'm talking That's what I'm talking That's about. That's what I'm, yeah, yeah all right. Nothing but love, nothing right, but so love for Y'all heard it here, y'all heard it here, so don't, <laughs> don't be surprised if on the videos coming in the future, you don't see someone from the funk center doing a little shout out. To Mr. Arrington. Ah, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. Now, two more things. Uh, I could go on and on and on. Because, you know, because folks, I grew up with this man. Uh, he's like a brother to me. Hadn't seen him in 40 years. That's right. Man. It's been That's a long crazy. time. I'm mm -hmm. getting chills just sitting in front of his presence. But who were some of your influences that made you even want to play the drums? Oh, man. I had to go back to Cold Sweat. I remember hearing Cold Sweat, James Brown. I'm like, oh my goodness, man, that groove. So it was like I had to have my Cold Sweat together. So my grandparents bought me a drum set and I started learn, uh, learning James Brown beats. I remember we had to do the double clutch, to do, to do, to do. We had to get our double clutch together with the speed king foot pedal before slimmer. the ghost before the ghost before pedal the ghost. came out come right. on the speed you king was play. king you had to you get had the to speed play. king on That's no right. question no question some folks don't know that and uh yeah 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 so you know it was first james brown and then um you know sly right after that you know it was like really hit me hard sly was a big influence um and you know i had to go back to i grew up in residence park on lindawood my mother used to play a lot of Jimmy Smith, Walk on the Wild Side. I wish I had some yeah, help on had, that, Walk we, on the we Wild had, we Side. We had the same mother. Yeah. yeah. We had the same upbringing. Yeah, that's man. what was in our some house. Some Kenny Burrell. Ooh. Yeah, my mom, yes. you know, on those Saturdays when you had that's to right. clean up and do the baseboards and clean that's the windows right. and get the music going. That some all made Bell's it work much all better. That, all that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Boy, Residence yeah. Park. No question. Yeah. Dayton. No question. Dayton. 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 As Marshall said, you know, he said that uh, we got our uniqueness because it's the sweat off God's feet mm. that ended up in our water. Mm. The now, great Marshall Jones. Yeah, the great Marshall Another awesome guy. Yes, sir. You know, we did yes, him too. sir. The great Marshall Jones. Lastly, well, it depends on how you answer this. Depends. But I know we winded down. I mean, this this time flew. Uh, I'm having a it good flew. time, man. I'm it having flew. some but fun. Remember, this is part one. Okay. Because part two is going to be free form. Okay. Matter of fact, we might even come to Scotland to do part mm. two. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Anyway, 
Give me your fondest memory surrounding your personal funk experience. Mm. Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Okay. Well, when I went to Steve Arrington's Hall of Fame and uh, Weekend in Knees was the single, the third single off of my first album. The first was Way Out, the second was Nobody Can Be You But You, and the third was Weekend in Knees. I remember distinctly opening up for Marvin Gaye. And he was doing a sexual healing tour. And Marvin Gaye, we talked for a few moments, and he told me, yo, man, I saw you on Soul Train, man. You for real. I'm like, okay, right now, man, I just got that from Marvin Gaye. So whatever's cracking after that, Marvin Gaye told me I was for real. Uh, I never forgot that, and I've carried that with me because being a musician has its ups and downs. Uh, and sometimes you need just some some of those good feelings that that can kick in for you when you when you're in a position where you know it's one of those down times. Marvin Gaye would be one. Another would be uh, the first time I sang lead on a song, and I never was considered. I, w I wasn't a singer in Dayton. I've always played drums. The first time I heard Just a Touch of Love on the radio that I was singing lead, that freaked me we out. We couldn't believe that you could sing. I remember yeah. that. They said, that's yeah. Steve singing. Well, no, it's Steve don't sing. Steve play drums. Yeah, that was, that was a big deal. You know, I always sang around the house and mimicking instruments, and but it was just my private thing. Uh, every once in a while, me and a couple homies would come to the house and we might sing some uh, Marrakesh Express from Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Know about, they don't know about that. Yeah, thing. a lot of they folks don't, don't know what's up with that. that. The Carpenters. But come on now. And uh, but you know, I was never like Mark Wood or some of the uh, greats who who sang all the way coming up. Um, but you know, I was doing my you thing just at the house by myself, and the next singing. thing I know, man, they say, right. "Yo, man." What you got to say it? on the mic? I don't know, dude. You know, see? I said, all right, won't you develop that? Come back to the studio. I'm like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And they was like, yo, that's crazy, but it's yeah, working. Right. And the next thing I know, man, I went from a drummer who sang from to a singer who played drums. It took me a long time to accept that because... I love the drums so much, and that's what I always wanted to do. And the next thing I knew, I'm like, thank God you got me singing. Okay, so the next thing I knew, I didn't even know how to, like, I didn't know how to entertain a crowd, so I just started watching, like, Roger. I'd watch uh, 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 Charlie Wilson, and I'd watch people like that. And I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing, because all I was, you know, I did it. I had to learn how to sing and, and, and rock a crowd right there in the middle of the ooh wee. Well, we're glad. Uh, but we're, uh, we're so I appreciate glad. being able to be in that position. I appreciate the brothers in Slave for believing in me and letting me do my thing. And uh, sheesh, man, I can't do nothing but say that I'm extremely blessed. Um, yeah, because the whole singing thing has brought a lot of the emotional content in, in my mental world out that I never thought was going to be a part of my thing. I thought I was going to be behind the drums, kicking it, which was fine with me. But now mm -hmm. to be singing and a songwriter and people, you know, feeling what I'm doing, that's extra. I never saw that. God coming. had another plan. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So what's your favorite slave song real quick? Oh, man, my favorite <laughs> slave song. Lord, how mercy. So many. But you know what? I'm going to have to say watching it. Yes. I'm going to yes. have to say watching you. Yes. Um, Tow that up. I have to say watching you and then the original one, Slide. Man, I, I, had to go, I had to go slide that's, too. Yeah, that's, slide that's, that got the old ball rolling. Them cats were 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? Very young. We just did Tim the other day. Yeah, the great Tim Dozier. Absolutely. 
You know, here's the thing about Tim. My brother had a band called uh, the Soul Agents. And my brother, Tim Dozier, played drums. Um, Marvin Craig was the bass player. Junie came through there. And I was just sitting on the steps, just checking everybody out. Otha Stokes, the brother to the great uh, Otis yes, Stokes. Yes, great uh, horn player. Came through there. Marv Pierce came mm -hmm. through there. Mm -hmm. Trombonist with mm -hmm. Ohio players. So oh, I saw all these that? guys yeah. locally. And I just would sit on the steps. And, and then, you know, they let me play the drums after, you know... They uh, finished rehearsing and everything, and uh, yeah, my brother Victor Shaw, much love to him, man. He was important in the, uh, the uh, development of the Dayton music scene, absolutely, um, from the local position. A lot of cats came through his band. Steve, part one is over. Mm. It's like we could go on and on. Oh, I'm sure man, could, I'm having a crazy only thing, good time. only thing man. I'm missing is a cup of coffee or, <laughs> or a shot of yak. I mean, one of the two. Take your <laughs> Let food. it do what it Let do. Let it do what it do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you yes, so oh, much, man, sir. George, man. Thank you so crazy, much, man. man. This is love crazy. You. Love you, man. Thank well, you so time, much. Next time. Next time. Next time. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. Yes, sir. They. Thank you. Crazy, man. Thank you, brother. Number love, homie. Thank, thank you. Number thank love. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed Ooh. it, man. Thank you. That was cool. I got chill. Thank you.